we have learnt so far about the correspondence principle that says that for n tending to infinity that is a large quantum number limit. The quantum results go to classical results. In this lecture, we are going to see how we can use this principle to derive something called the selection rules and also the A coefficient for the harmonic oscillator. Recall, I took three examples in the previous lectures and I will just consider two of these, the harmonic oscillator and the particle in a box. And in the harmonic oscillator case, I said that the displacement can be written as summation C tau e raised to i tau omega t, where omega is the basic frequency which is nu times 2 pi which was equal to 2 pi v over 2 l. On the other hand, in the case of harmonic oscillator, x t has only one component and I can write this as the amplitude e raised to i omega t. In fact, I would do better than that. This is usually written as a cosine of omega t which is amplitude divided by 2 e raised to i omega t plus e raised to minus i omega t. Thus you see that uh, the particle moving in a box has the fundamental frequency v over 2 l and all its multiples and therefore when it performs motion it will radiate all kinds of frequencies. The fundamental and its harmonics tau times that much whereas a particle performing motion in a harmonic oscillator would give out only one frequency. Let us see how we can use that. So, classically we just learnt that particle in a box will give all frequencies. By all frequency we do not mean that it will give out frequencies which are continuously varying. But if it makes a transition, if the particle makes a transition from nth level to say E n minus tau level, then the frequencies emitted would be tau times omega n, right, where omega n is the angular frequency related to motion in the nth level. So, classically this frequency omega n or the angular frequency connected with the motion in the nth level will be the frequency of radiation. And what we saw last time is that if I write its displacement versus time, it is like this. It is not a pure harmonic. So, this is what tells you that x t actually has higher harmonics also which I wrote earlier c, c tau e raised to i tau omega, let us call it omega n t. So, it will give a frequency of radiation omega n and since the motion also contains other frequencies, all the other frequencies will also come out. Let us see what does it teach us about quantum transitions. So, let us now write quantum mechanically radiation does not come out because a particle is oscillating with frequency nu rather it comes out by jumps. So, radiation comes out by jumps radiation 
comes out by jumps between levels whereas classically it is because of the acceleration. Now if a radiation is emitted due to jump from nth to n minus tau th level the frequency nu n n minus tau is given as e n minus e n minus tau divided by h. This is given by finite difference right whereas you recall from the previous lecture in classically it is given by a differentiation with respect to j. Now as n tends to infinity nu n t n minus tau go to tau nu n where nu n is the classical frequency. So you see that classically since all these frequencies are observed right so let us write this classically since all the frequencies tau nu n are observed right that means quantum mechanically a particle can jump to any n minus tau. Let me write this again. So this is nth level n minus tau level and here is this jump coming in and some radiation comes out. So radiation frequency n n minus tau is E n minus E n minus tau over h and you see that classically all tau nu n are observed because the particle makes a motion periodic motion of basic frequency nu n but then also the all these harmonics exist. So this means there is no restriction on where that is n minus tau does the particle jump to. If let us see a counter example if we say that n can go to n minus 1 only and this is just counter example if we say this then as n goes to infinity only the fundamental frequency will be observed. That means it is not just n minus 1 it can go to any frequency it likes here. Now the question arises question is there a n critical beyond which we can say that classical mechanics is good and below which quantum mechanics is good. In other words is there a boundary between classical and quantum mechanics? The answer is no actually the true theory is quantum mechanics. It is only as we saw in the previous uh, lecture only when we can replace delta E 
by h by the derivative d e by d j times n tau that classical theory holds good and that means basically that n has to be large enough and tau has to be much 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 smaller than n that is the only condition but what this principle is telling you is that you should actually be approaching classical level when you can replace the, the difference by derivative effectively and for that the condition is n is very large and tau is much less than n. Now let us take the other example, the other example is this harmonic oscillator and classically its motion is given by xt equals a by 2 e raised to i omega t plus e raised to minus i omega t that is it has only one frequency. Let us look at it quantum mechanically. There are these levels h nu, 2 h nu, 3 h nu, 4 h nu and so on and the radiation is given out when there is a jump. Now you see how we see by comparing with uh, classical result there is a selection rule. Suppose n to n minus tau transition takes place. Then the corresponding frequency right the corresponding frequency in classical limit will be tau times omega. However, classically we see only omega this implies tau at max can be 1 and this gives you a restriction that in a harmonic oscillator the only jumps that take place are where n goes the particle makes a jump n goes to n minus 1 or if it absorbs n plus 1. So this gives what is called a selection rule. And that says selection rule says that the jump is made or the transition takes place for which delta n magnitude is 1. Otherwise for all of the transitions there will be no radiation. So there is no other transition that gives out radiation and why is that let me repeat because if other transitions also took place in large and limit we will see other frequencies also and that does not happen. So to be consistent with correspondence principle there is only one transition allowed in the quantum level. So a question that has arisen just now is question if you need single frequency for laser 
should you use harmonic oscillator confinement actually the two questions are not related because in a laser you choose the frequency that causes the transition to be precisely that frequency. So, you can choose any system and the stimulated emission will take place only for that particular frequency with which you are doing the stimulated emission. So, this question uh, does not really arise. 